and it's just a bloody mess. <laughs> <laughs> Whilst I was cadging the timber, I couldn't cad it all the same size. Because every reconstruction is a little bit different, obviously, because usually the location is different and the availability of equipment on site is different. Now we've got number three attached to number four. How's that happened? That's how you said. That's how you said. <laughs> oh, I can hear an echo. <laughs> oh, you know why? <laughs> Sorry, the, way 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 the old, old Tell story. Dow's wrong again. Because that's number four there, isn't it? <laughs> Can you trust your dad? Come on. Stop going. Don't be amazed, he said. Shut it, Josh. The <laughs> <laughs> viewers are not contributing to the more. Anyway, I'll just put, I'll finish the roof on the cabin, right? So. <laughs> Here's the grip. Take it back, lads, a design fault. If we do a three-day reconstruction, we know that we're going to get two good days. The first day is going to be hyperactive, then winding down. The second two days is going to be down to the hard nitty-gritty of what it's all about. Everything that is the Lazy Jacks has been a development from the reconstructions, from the visual point of view. Because we soon realised that wearing the, the Namby Pamby Poncified costumes that you see in the Wild West movies and uh, books and magazines and that sort of stuff, that people cannot survive in those sort of clothes. Cold, you can combat rain, you can't combat so easily. How's that fire in there, day? But the second and most important problem is the boredom, where everything is just work, 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 and very little entertainment. The more bored we get with the reconstruction, the more sympathy we feel for the characters that we portray. It's no good researching on one particular character and trying to relive his life, because that just makes the whole thing a sham using their own personality, they soon start to develop a personality which is slightly different from their own. What you're doing is you're stripping away the conveniences of modern day, leaving a basic person. We've been out in sub-zero temperatures, we've been out where, uh, where we've sat with blankets round us and then our knees are frozen. We've all got some little ailments, arthritis and lumbago and all the things that come through sleeping on damp ground, which people will probably laugh at and think, well, that's silly. But it's not silly unless if, if you're interested in learning something about people. It was a very auspicious year, 1874, but it gives a nice period of time from, from the Civil War. The southern people who fought and had such passion for the South um, were disappointed by it at the end of it. I've had a little bit of time to get over it and are starting to look to themselves a little bit. And many people were picking up their belongings and making a long trek to the new land. Once again, they got no trade behind them and that was a thing that people were wanting out west, were tradesmen. That's where the black country and many of the parts of England come into it because they were after tradesmen, they were after chainsmiths and uh, blacksmiths and woodworkers and all the rest of it. But the southern whites had got no trades, only what they'd learnt during the Civil War, which was, which was shooting and killing. What? To the group. Coffee, I'm going to be ready for another 15 minutes. Good we'll luck then. Start today. And then as soon as the reality starts to hit you and you think to yourself, well, I'm stuck here on my own, you know, um, I've got to survive. There's only a, there's a 15 foot by 10 foot cabin and there's only one fireplace and there's only an area around about five foot a square where it's going to be warm all night, you know. And there's eight blokes and eight blokes can't possibly fit into that area. How am I going to get into that area? Have you put that door on, Josh? Have you nailed it all screwed it? How long is it going to take you to do that? About a week. <laughs> I like to make sure that the boys are kept busy with just the survival part of it. I reckon that uh, in an hour from now you can try it and it won't cut anything. That's what we're working on, isn't it? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> we I tell you one thing, if we, if we, if we can't use those things, we can always substitute them for yours, Bob. I can chew the logs in half, if that's what you want. Yeah. When uh, most part, when you skin it, 
um, takes most of the shot out with it because what happens is, is when it goes in, it takes that thick membrane in with it, right? Yeah. And then when the thing's skinned and you're pulling the skin off, fortunately it takes the pellets out with it. I had one of these about, about three months ago and uh, no, I don't know whether you remember, Caleb. Put it on the, on the tree and I put it the wrong way around. <laughs> and uh, I thought I'm going to have a beautiful skin there. When I got to it, it was just one mass of bloody wood lice. Have you found any? Uh, what? Are you making more names? No, I'm busy. Reconstructions actually are nothing to do with teamwork. The setting up has to be worked as a team, it can't be done otherwise. But as soon as they start to realise that they've got to live in a very smoky, wet, damp atmosphere, they start to get a little bit gripey and a little bit nasty, and the teamwork just disintegrates. I, I, did. I was on fire watch till one o'clock. Right? Oh, we're on fire you were sitting here and you were all bloody snoring your heads off. Don't Tell me about sleeping all night. Yeah. I'll keep trying. Try again.